Mr. Hitetluk. I'm co-curator of uh, this uh, exhibition. Uh, this is Oksana Korpovets. Uh, she's, uh, she's in our curator uh, team. And, uh, she I, I wrote a text for the catalog, catalog which will be for the finissage. So come for the finissage uh, to read my text. Uh, yeah, so maybe I, uh, I will speak uh, in Ukrainian and Oksana will translate when I uh, uh, have some problems. Yeah, yeah. Some problems. Um, so welcome uh, to uh, fifth uh, trinal of uh, Ukrainian contemporary art, uh, Ukrainian cross-section. And this, this exhibition called Ukraine Unmuted and it was uh, created after the uh, big war starts in Ukraine. So, uh, uh, me as a, a curator and, at, and as an, uh, an artist, I think that, that the culture itself and the uh, art, it's, it is a basement of our um, civilization and our society. So we uh, we want to show uh, to European uh, viewers, to, to European people, Ukrainian culture, Ukrainian contemporary art, uh, mm -hmm. and, and what else? Uh, and the biennial itself is a. Um, it took three, place three, three tri, 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 triennial. It took place already in Warsaw, uh, in uh, Wroclaw during the uh, capital of culture as well, and it took place in, in Lublin, in Lublin uh, yeah. and its first time in Lithuania. And uh, with the, the, this triennial tries to bring voices from different parts of Ukraine. So artists are represented from the eastern part of Ukraine, south from south. South, West, East, North, uh, and, and so it's a it's a um, try to show different varieties and approaches. Art artists work with the um, contemporary problems, uh, issues, uh, cultural heritage, self understanding in Ukraine. Uh, so uh, and and this particular. Uh, iteration calls Ukraine unmuted, meaning that uh, Ukraine uh, became unmuted just with the war, with this uh, um, attention of the whole world uh, to Ukrainian voices, which was never happened before. And uh, many uh, Western countries right now, they, for them it's still unknown territory, and everyone tried to show Ukrainian art or uh, to represent Ukrainian, Ukrainian culture, culture yeah. uh, and, and everyone in the West, for instance, uh, saying that where we were, why we were not knowing anything about, about uh, Ukraine, uh, and Ukraine. Ukraine was represented th through the Russian eye until now. And uh, it's like uh, Ukraine right now on the political and cultural level take, uh, take responsibility for own uh, cultural heritage, past uh, representation of the past, present and future. And, and finding its voice. And this is really important and with this show we will try to, to uh, represent works that are saying about, that are showing how this unmute, how this finding of voice are, is uh, happening right now. Yeah, and the most works uh, were created uh, in the last few years, uh, but, but few works were created uh, Specific. Kept specifically for this this project, and I will uh, note yeah. that. Many works created in 2022 yeah. as so well. You're yeah. welcome to that to this room. So in this space you can see uh, works of, of, of three Ukrainian artists and I want to start from uh, this very sensitive work which, which was uh, created by uh, Ukrainian artist from Kharkiv. Uh, uh, 
maybe you know Kharkiv is the, uh, the, the, the second biggest city in, in the eastern Ukraine and uh, a part of Kharkiv, uh, the, big, the big district of Kharkiv, uh, which is called Saltivka, uh, where, where used to live uh, more than uh, 400,000 people. So it's, I think it's, uh, this district is bigger than Kaunas. Uh, it was totally bombed and totally uh, ruined. And uh, uh, this uh, artist, uh, Konstantin Zorkin, he, uh, he used to live in this, in this, uh, uh, in this area. And this, his work is, uh, is about, uh, it's about uh, this uh, very tragic period of, of, uh, of city history. Yeah, and for him, the metal, the, the rusted metal, uh, is the is his material, and uh, in his concept, he is thinking about uh, how we perceive uh, metal like something that can protect us. We build our homes with the metal constructions to make them strong. Uh, we think about arms that could protect us, but the, as, at the same time, the same metal is their weapon of massive destruction, and. Uh, uh, it is also about this reality when in the war you get used to what is going on and a little bit feel safe uh, in your home. And, but it's safety, it's really kind of uh, changing all the time. So you feel safety and you feel and you expect all the time to be, to be, uh, to be a target and to be um, traumatized. So it's a kind of this balance that you are trying to find when you, when you live in this condition, from, from kind of safety to, uh, to unsafety. Um, and the metal for him was really this um, um, metaphor um, of, of this condition, of this feeling. Yeah, and, and this artist uh, uh, he always works with uh, with wood and mm -hmm. metal. Mm -hmm. uh, here are two artists in dialogue: uh, Katerina Lisavenka and Katya Lipkin. Um, here we see watercolor uh, watercolor painting, uh, and it's usually she works with parts of the body uh, with very uh, sensitive naked uh, bodies of women and kids. Uh, children, so uh, and she uses she she, she present them like very um, method 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 uh, mythical uh, naked uh, contrasted with reality very sensitive and it it gives and 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 the um, watercolor itself it gives this sensitivity to uh, to the human body it makes it even more thin, even more um, fragile, uh, and, and with this con 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 uh, contrast from, like, they are in opposite to real life, but with this con contrast, uh, she um, brings this message of this sensitivity and fragility, and which is really strong from, from my point of view, and uh, uh, this message is, uh, has a political stance. Uh, so it's on the, this level of emotions, it um, appeals to the viewer um, and uh, you, you don't need words, you don't need a political kind of stance that people are suffering and so on. This works, I think, uh, speak more uh, from, from how, how, how she represents a human, uh, human body. And uh, if, if here a uh, human body is fragile, uh, here we see the scene uh, of, of the birth, the, the um, action, uh, which women are together, they are in cooperation, they are focused on the action, uh, and uh, this action is a new life. Uh, and um, the work calls, um, the, the work name is Woman Smiles, Woman Takes and Woman Gives Birth, an oval. So uh, it's, it has very, very um, operative uh, kind of message that I take 
and I do and I make it. It's like this, uh, th this message really directed. Um, I think it's the same like all Ukrainians when they were uh, ready to fight and ready to protect and ready to um, give this voice uh, to their needs on the global arena to say what we need. And for me, this work is also this uh, um, birth of the voice, of uh, Ukrainian voice. Yeah, and, and, and both artists are um, key representatives of feminist art in Ukraine. So this, uh, uh, this video installation, which is called uh, When the Fog Clears, uh, was created by the Ukrainian artist Sergei Petluk. I am Sergei Petluk. And this, uh, this installation was uh, created in 2018. Right? Yeah, 2018. And uh, when when the war the, when the big war starts, I think it's uh, quite minus uh, connotation. Uh, change its meaning. Right? Yeah, I think it's this this works uh, start like yeah. It, it, it's it's get a, a new reading, uh, I think. Yeah. So this work uh, this work is about uh, uh, human fair. Fear. Fear. Uh, especially, uh, it's about human fear of, uh, of war, of death. Uh, no. Uh, not knowing. So, so for, for me, it's uh, <laughs> so for me, it's uh, uh, those tower towels. Uh, they are uh, towers. They are like in a prison. You know, when you are in a prison and you're looking on the people who are contained in some kind of closed space, and those prisoners, they don't don't ha they can't react. They they can't do anything they are overlooked or those are also like you write in your concept um, um, uh, it, it's like uh, these towers uh, it's like something between uh, prison towers uh, and hunting towers hunting uh, for the animals for the, for the animals so when when you waiting to kill someone and yeah and, and uh, I, I like put this uh, 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 myself and, and these people in the situation when uh, like uh, mm, they are targets uh, yeah that they are tar targets and they are waiting for the uh, when the when the folk uh, when the folk clears and and sun uh, good first light on them so they become visible and they trying to escape from this visibility and this is exactly the feeling what, which Ukrainians feel when they are actually a target yeah. and it's not necessarily if you are in the unsafe part or safe part of Ukraine you feel yourself a target, your home is not protected, uh, your body is not protected, your mind is not protected because like military situation is going through this media uh, things and like you feel naked and protected you feel that something bigger than you is uh, watching you is uh, putting light on you and it's not safe neither at, at home ni not yeah, in the street and can kill you uh, every, every, every anywhere every, yeah. Uh, yeah and the viewer while kind of associating uh, themselves with those naked bodies who are trying to escape as well can try a role uh, probably of unsafe target to being an unsafe target.
So uh, the work Peace and Tranquility was filmed by Miro uh, Klechko and Anatoly Tatarenko uh, and based on their um, essay or story of uh, Ukrainian writer Andrei Bandarenko. And uh, with the, when the war started, he started to make a connection between different, um, between his D different gener sto family stories of his di of different generation of his family, uh, from his grandmother, uh, grandparents to his parents and to himself, and it appeared that uh, he 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 was thinking that he is living in peace and tranquility when he was a kid, uh, when he was a young man, but it appeared for him when he connects all the stories. All his family, grandparents and parents, went through the same story for, through, through Stalinism, through um, uh, communism, uh, and, and this is the connection of the survival, uh, st stories of survival, survival and violence caused by the state uh, to his family. And he made a conclusion that uh, it was never peace and tranquility. It was the same violence, it was the same uh, tri uh, survival, and uh, this kind of all connected. And this uh, violence in his, in, in his body was from childhood, in his mind and body. And um, um, so kind of Conti continuity of uh... yeah and and uh, the video uh, now we uh, uh, we see the end of this uh, this video and it means that we we were ready to to this war because our like uh, our mm -hmm. parents and our grandparents uh, they they uh, they they were ready for the big war as well. So we like we mentally were ready. Yeah, for yeah this. Be because this this violence it was uh, on the some level unconscious levels in our in previous generation it was really strong. So and he came he made a conclusion that it was never peace and tranquility. It was always this violence always was part of us. So this work. Oh. So uh, this work in, in this uh, telephone, te telephone, telephone uh, uh, boxes, boxes. <laughs> uh, it's created by, by uh, Ukrainian artist uh, Vlodko Kaufman uh, with uh, in collaboration with uh, many other artists. Seven seven Ukrainian artists, and uh, the the main uh, aim of this work is uh, soul land land, land uh, earth land, land. so uh, yeah, yeah land uh, so because він говорить про про землю про так як війна йде також про про територію про землю here here uh, he he talks about about the land uh, and uh, trying to understand what what land means for ukrainians uh, specifically so uh, uh, here you see the performer who is eating a conserved, uh, like Ukrainians make co conservations for the winter, and she made a conservation from F, and uh, she she's eaten this earth um, here. Uh, he, here is the work constructed from memories, so audience were invited to came and draw uh, the map of Ukraine, how they remember it, without looking on the real map. And then they put it all together, um, making this kind of collage. Um, and uh, here you see the video, um, uh, Alexander Dovzhenko, artist, uh, film famous Soviet Ukrainian filmmaker, uh, from 1930s. Yes. Uh, so this is his uh, world-famous film uh, about, uh, which is called Earth. Uh, 
land. Right. Uh, so, um, Lotko Kaufman tri tri combines uh, these works in one place, making this multiplicity of voices and trying to understand what land means for Ukrainians who eat it, who eat fruits. Uh, uh, from, from the land, uh, Ukrainians who, who has their home uh, on this land, Ukrainians who die, and Ukrainians who, uh, lost. who lost the land. Um, uh, and this is also about this deep-rootedness to the each piece of your land. Uh, this close bond, close connection, and, and, the, and the painful feeling that your land is something, is a target for enemy, for whom it is something abstract, just for extractivism um, and use, uh, and uh, for like a map that is changing on under your feet uh, all the time. And uh, it is also about this fear of losing it, which is also goes from generation to generation. <laughs> Fantastic little, little splash and from uh, Dnipro city and the Chesopolikov from uh, Kherson. Kherson. Uh, <laughs> Well, it's a, it's about uh, actually this video. this video is about uh, her, uh, Soviet heritage in architecture, uh, which was left um, in many cities, especially in the east. Uh, here, particularly, um, they talk about big hotel, the huge hotel uh, Paros, which will never be uh, finished. Uh, it was supposed it's to be finished by 1870s, uh, then, uh, then 1980s, yeah. 90s. Uh, 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 it's in the center of the city, it's big and it's unfinished. And um, artists collect information uh, what people were doing with this building, how they kind of tried to rethink uh, the heritage. So. Uh, uh, some activists put their Ukrainian uh, you, you paint huge uh, uh, flag, for example, or and or uh, and him. yeah, or, or like huge smile, or or, or, or take uh, or, or make uh, uh, illegal illegal parties in this in building. This building. Um, the mayor of of the city try uh, try to sell this to building. Sell several yeah they sell it several times they try they said that they will be blow it up so that to clean the area and build something new and artists just research all the projects around the same building yeah and, uh, the, and this this uh, this art piece it's not only about uh, the building the, itself the building it's, itself but it's about uh, this soviet uh, heritage uh, uh, soviet uh, uh, heritage soviet mentality which which we uh, yeah, which every one of us still carries and it's also about this project of modernity of soviet modernity that to build something huge very pathetic uh, which is uncomfortable probably for people but uh, has this big uh, representation Ну, і також це про цю радянську ментальність, яка є в нас, яку ми хочемо зараз It's about the Soviet mentality that Ukrainians are trying to rework somehow. to leave it, to rework it, to to understand it on the new level. Uh, and this, uh, in this works, in this work, he uh, contain. Uh, it's a photography, uh, kind of collages, right? Yeah, 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 Photographic yeah. collages. Uh, which he took in in uh, 
Kherson um, or uh, southern part in cities of southern part uh, of Ukraine. Um, it's a left of uh, so it's a kind of left of everyday life he combines seeds fruits flowers with the uh, rests of from everyday kind of people use uh, from objects of ideology and this combination uh, he, he researches the dis their cultural destruction dismantling um, and, and this kind of um, imperial, imperialistic ideology which is dismantled, which is reworked in Ukraine, this kind of mess and mix. And uh, with the war representation, when we see the ruins of buildings uh, mixed with the people, objects of everyday use, um, and mi mixed with the earth and metal and ruin, it's kind of has also a new, new reading. Um, in this light. So see, uh, now here you can see the, uh, the, the performance of uh, five Ukrainian performances and maybe some of, some of you uh, could see it yes, yesterday evening before the opening of, of the exhibition mm -hmm. and this is uh, documentation of the, the same performance which was uh, which artist made in, in Lviv in Ukraine. So uh, here uh, you can see the artwork which is called uh, Leaking War Wounds. Uh, and this is uh, a documentation of long-term uh, performance of uh, two artists from Donetsk, from Donetsk region. Uh, region. region. And uh, this, this very simple but very um, strong performance. Uh, they, uh, these two artists left Donetsk after this war uh, starts in 2014 in Donetsk uh, region, and they 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 left that uh, uh, they left uh, Donetsk. They they I think uh, uh, they live in Poland. They live in Poland now, and like in 2000. Uh, 16, someone pre um, presented, presented them, them gift, gift from Donetsk region, from one city of Donetsk region where uh, is... Uh, south Mines. South, south mine. So this tank is done uh, from south uh, and inside of it is a uh, light? Uh, yeah, so it's like salt uh, lamp uh, and... Um, this story about how the war changed our minds because before the war, uh, these lamps were in uh, I don't know souvenir the, shops. Yeah, uh, but uh, the forms of these lamps were like I don't know like flowers, flowers, something, uh, yeah, uh, moon or something like that. And at the, after 2000, 2014, uh, it became a tank. So uh, uh, artists decided to to leak this the tank, and they leak uh, uh, they leak uh, this tank every day, and they uh, uh, took photos once a week, and it it took them uh, 
240 weeks to to lick this salt. To lick completely this sal salty tank. And yeah, so they start this this performance in 2016. Uh, 16. And and this performance uh, in the end of 2020. Uh, 21s just few months before the big war starts in Ukraine. Yeah, and leaking the war wounds uh, also means that uh, this process, this trauma, and its healing, it's uh, takes long, long time, uh, and uh, many, many iteration in each personal story. So I think this is the kind of representation of this long, long process of leaking your wound. Yeah. And this is the what, what left <laughs> from, from the leaked tank. Yeah. These are uh, called uh, invasions uh, created by the Ukrainian artist Alexina Katizde, uh, who, uh, who was born in Donetsk region and she left Donetsk as well in, in, in 2014 and this uh, this work is about uh, invasions but in non-human uh, world. world so it's about invasions uh, of uh, plants uh, Mm, and she, yeah. she talks about plans that are, came uh, with people from South America and they don't have uh, natural enemies uh, in, on Ukrainian soil. And they grow like in the, United, or in the South America like this and in uh, Ukraine they become a problem because they grow very big and very strong and uh, they're dangerous for other species. But she also talked about that uh, people should learn uh, from, uh, from plants because they are, even if they are invasive, they adjust some, somehow one to another and they don't kill one another in a second and they, they are not running away from the soil where they took the root. Uh, so, and she sees uh, in the strategies of plants like real pacifism. Uh, so she, she thinks that living strategies of plane is a pacifism which people should uh, acquire. So it's uh, basically the project is a um, criticism of anthropocentrism uh, when uh, we think that a human stands um, uh, in the center of the universe and all the events happening around the human but we should start thinking, especially with the wars and critical uh, and climate change, uh, uh, critical for the human survival, we need to change our optics. Um, and it's critical for today. Um, yeah, and you, 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 can, you can watch uh, 30 minutes 3D uh, uh, movie about, like, uh, it's, it's called Invasions 1, 2, 3. Uh, yeah, and you can you can see this uh, graphic story uh, about um, f first weeks of of, uh, uh, of the war. She 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 uh, she's living near Kiev. near Kiev in a village and yeah in the village uh, this village. Uh, wasn't occupied. But it was five kilometers, uh, Russian troops staying five kilometers away from her, from her home. It was five kilometers from Bucha. Yeah. Uh, so she said, she, she, she's a Russian speaker, speaker herself, uh, uh, but uh, she, used she used to be a Russian speaker. Uh, but she said that the longer she stayed in the basement, the lo longer uh, she heard uh, about these cruelties and those sound sounds of rockets and uh, uh, fight, uh, the longer he started to she, hate, she, she started to ha hate uh, um, Russian, language. Uh, Russian language and, uh, and, and Russian culture. <laughs> So now you can see two art pieces uh, from artists uh, uh, 
uh, from Kharkiv and Kiev. Uh, one of his called uh, Mapa Mundi. And in this uh, huge installation, you can see um, uh, 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 invent, in, invented or imaginary imaginary uh, plan of building, uh, but not, but it's not a simple building. This is the uh, world map uh, constructed like a huge. Uh, Communal um, apartment. Mm -hmm. Maybe you know what what does it mean? Communal. In uh, it was very popular in Soviet time. So, S yeah. So it's kind of collective space, but a global collective space. And we see here that something is. Uh, someone has a lot a lot of space. Someone has like a tiny space. Uh, somewhere it is like really uncomfortable, somewhere it's um, really close, uh, close everything. And it seems like the, the war in Ukraine with its connection to different global processes, it's uh, again uh, opened up this closeness of everything, interconnectedness between different parts of the world and different processes and again uh, showed this um, uh, inequalities, uh, global inequalities like people in Africa suffer, suffering from the hunger because Ukrainian, uh, for, it, it is impossible to uh, ship uh, uh, Ukrainian grain. Uh, so this, this project is more or less about this, about this interconnectedness and uh, inequality, in the global inequality. Yeah, you can take the print of this uh, map if you want, in the corner. And and maybe you know what, what does this represent? Uh, it's Antarctica. Uh, Antarctica, yes, yes, yes. yes. <laughs> And uh, on this wall, you can see uh, the process of escaping. Uh, so, uh, artists build the temporary bridge, and uh, so if uh, if you uh, project this this uh, bridge into uh, into this wall, you can so you can escape from one one uh, room to another. Yeah, but also this wall is a real wall, uh, yeah. which is built in Slovakia uh, to separate Roma community from the rest of the citizens. So it's uh, if here we see the global inequality, uh, here we see the how inequalities are built against uh, against minority group, uh, be the though like national minorities or Roma community or LGBT community, and the artist um, is thinking about building this bridge to cross this uh, cemetery, solid cemetery, big wall. And he, his bridge is like wooden, temporary. Uh, it's not stable, but at least uh, he, he, he make an attempt to cross this wall. So here a lot of small spaces, uh, so I don't know how we will... No, uh, wait for people maybe. Yeah, be careful of, of hitting system. Uh, Uh, okay. Yeah. So Jana, Bac Jana Bacinska or Jan Bacinski is LGBT uh, artist, um, queer, queer, queer ar artist. artist. So um, she or he, uh, uh, she sometimes wrote her name like Jana Bacinska, sometimes Jan Bacinski. So it's. Uh, um, she she thinks about violence, which. Uh, uh, she, she also. Uh, she also telling story about her uh, or his uh, relatives, his uh, his or her uh, grandfather, 
and who beat about, his father and her, his father about, who beat her uh, about violence in in our families violence in our society and how this violence uh, this small uh, violence uh, for uh, grows grows to to the collective uh, growth, violence yeah, on the state level uh, structural violence when uh, uh, people don't have access to resources their rights are um, deprived uh, and this is all hap starting from the family level and uh, her grandfather was military man uh, and her father was military man and they dreamed that the daughter also will be uh, um, a, a, a police police woman <laughs> police woman uh, but she kind of hijacked uh, the system completely became in a queer uh, artist uh, and taking uh, this uh, the, the, the work name is my grandfather's skin she's trying to throw away her grandfather's skin this uh, uh, co costumes left uh, all over uh, her, her, her parents' uh, home. So um, this is all what we have to do this uh, to take off this, so uh, this Soviet, old Soviet skin of our, uh, our, our grandparents and parents, right? Yeah. Uh, in some way. Uh, uh, Я думаю, нам про ці два зали треба буде розказати, бо ми там не близимо. Here you see the, the part of a huge uh, project uh, which called uh, Telling Dam. T Telling Dam. It's a, a kind of um, for radioactive, uh, the kind of space where radioact radioactive rests uh, being kind of hidden in the, in, in, in the land, right? Yeah. Це проект, це такий іронічний проект про майбутній музей людської цивілізації. So the artists talk also about future museum of of human civilization after human extinct and which will be represented in this museum. It will be represented only some some uncomprehensible sounds, uh, uncomprehensible symbols uh, left on this territory. But also for me, it's a kind of unexpressed, this project and this voice, they, they voice in this land, which was reorganized for the human uh, needs. Uh, they they rep represent this feeling that you can't express uh, with this big strategy what humans do <coughs> to the land, how, how they use it, how they unthinkably use it, and how stupid it is it. And uh, they, they, they use the voice and the body as a resistance to, to this uh, unthinkable thing, but also like a compassion and love to, to, um, to, the, to the land. On all the species, uh, you can see only one word. Uh, it's uh, Diakoyu. Thank I you. Yes. 
uh, by Stanislav Turina, and it's like on the simple sheets of paper, uh, like a, some kind of draft, some kind of uh, rest of, of from something. But uh, this is the only. Uh, th this is the very s strong um, kind of feeling we all have. This thank you uh, for the. It's a kind of thank you for all we share, all we have in common, uh, country and moment. Uh, <laughs> this kind of solidarity, um, which yeah. is w which is incredible and which is um, uh, impossible to 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 conceive. Yes, and uh, this this project artist started in in February 2022. Uh, he he's living in Kiev and he. He didn't uh, leave Kiev in, in like first uh, few days. So he all the time stayed in Kiev. Yeah, and and he started to to draw uh, this simple word "Yaku" to every every person uh, who he meet who he met, and every person who helped him, for example, with uh, some water or bread mm -hmm. or uh, some. Uh, Volunteers, uh, volunteers, uh, some yeah. and and his Jaku, uh, his Aichi, uh, uh, his his thank you, uh, he spread over the, the Ukra Ukraine because mm -hmm. he he sent uh, to his friends to, to his, this, from different this parts of yes, Ukraine. Yeah, to, and uh, it's very like. From one side, it's very simple. Uh, yeah, and maybe it's not readable uh, for for in the foreign uh, uh, context, but for us, it was uh, all in the social media, and it was really important to to uh, artists to receive this thank you to um, kind of very warm uh, yeah. feeling. Yeah, and we we bring this thank you to you. <laughs> we, we show this thank, big, thank big you thank to you, you, to, yeah. to you. Uh, well and that very uh, very small room uh, in yeah. that uh, we show the project of uh, Nikolai Karaginovich which called uh, Ukrainians the people who cannot go home mm -hmm. And that project is about Ukrainian community in Great Britain. It was done in 2019. Yeah. Uh, 2019, before the full full invasion of Russia to Ukraine. So he was thinking about uh, how, uh, about how um, Ukrainian uh, immigrants in Great Britain, how they live in what kind of imaginary um, self-identification. Um, so they uh, use these patriotic symbols, songs, but they are kind of, but th these are immigrants in the second or third generation. Yeah. And their understanding of the, themselves is really, uh, blurred and far away from uh, today's Ukraine. And he researches this, how um, this imaginary uh, thinking of yourself, how you take it on yourself and you practice it, uh, and the tradition is completely different already. Um, so, and it, it's probably about, about this um, thing that sometimes uh, many uh, stuff that Russia created, that Imperial Center created for us, we took as ourselves, as ours, uh, but now we need to look through the history and um, everything. everything and choose for ourselves what we want to rem remember, how we want to remember, who we are and so on, and only this way we can be unmuted. Um. And the last project, Uh, so this uh, this art piece called Palanitsa uh, by a Ukrainian artist Janna Kadyrova, and uh, from one side this this uh, this piece is quite um, ir ir ironic. 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 Uh, but but from other side it's quite uh, tra 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 tragic tragic because uh, Palenica is uh, Ukrainian world uh, of, uh, traditional wheat bread 
yeah, traditional wheat bread and uh, Russian they can't um, it, it consisted of uh, um, soft soft and hard um, s sounds that for Russian speakers it's really difficult to say Palanitsa. yeah so, so they, they said pa Palunitsa, pa Palinitsa. Palinitsa. Yeah. Yeah, the, yeah. They, they can pro uh, pronounce uh, properly this world, and, and, and it become with the war. It become like a real symbol when you are understanding who who is Ukrainian, who is not Ukrainian. Yeah, because uh, uh, as you know, Ukraine is uh, a bilingual country, and uh, like uh, one third of Ukraine, especially, especially south and and uh, and uh, east, east. Uh, mostly spoke. Uh, uh, used to be mostly spoke Russian, yeah. uh, uh, but uh, but they can they can uh, they, can, they uh, study at school and they can pronounce well, but Russian but kind Russian of pronounce. Never, yeah, it, yeah. So and, and when uh, it was a big uh, chaos everywhere, and many Russian uh, kind of agents in the civil forms, they came to the cities, including Lviv, in all parts, and, yeah. and they uh, looked where where is military object. Uh, to, to provide this information to Russian side, so and they usually went uh, at night and, yeah, and, and uh, people catch and them and ask, ask, ask them to say Palyanitsa. Yeah, tell us Palyanitsa, and they oh, oh. Yeah, yeah. And if they could not say it, it was obvious that the people are collecting some kind of information. Yeah, and, um, and, and artists uh, uh, made this Palyanitsa from from the stone. Uh, which she found in uh, in Carpathian Mount. Uh, she's from Kiev, but with the war she escaped to uh, Carpathian Mountains in the west, uh, and there she started her prep, like uh, thinking how she could be, how she could work and continue her practice. So she found us uh, in the Carpathian rivers, uh, th those stones, and made. Uh, stone bread from it but it's also kind of ironic because like now before the war we didn't think that ukrainian soul uh, feeds the half of the world yeah. it's with wheat uh, and uh, usually uh, the work presented on the white white uh, tablecloth and it kind of uh, this lack of context of this bread that uh, the world is eating that uh, they don't know that it's on the grown on their earth that is like um, bombed all the time that is uh, uh, suffering so much and uh, it's also about this uh, voice of the land not only voice of ukrainians but voice of the uh, of the unmutedness and and visibility of this land where this bread is growing Thank you very much. Yeah, and, and the video is really funny. Yeah, so if you... Very, yeah, uh, it's, it's uh, 25 uh, minutes video. It's very, very funny. But, but the most funny uh, moment when she presents her art objects and local, local people, maybe you'll see here, local people try to touch it and say, no, 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 it's art object, don't <laughs> touch it. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Thank you.